This right here is the Alecro CrowView 14-inch Full HD monitor, which is a monitor that can directly clamp to your computer screen so that there is nothing standing around, it is just connected to your computer. There is no glue needed, it just attaches to the back of your computer, you can switch it out to different computers, you can also use it freestanding in a vertical and horizontal format, and we are going to talk about it and start with the unboxing. You open the box up, you have a bit of a protective foam right there, a hand booklet that you can use to kind of like get to know the functionalities of the monitor as well as all the different things about the ways that it can be stood up. And then you have the monitor panel itself in a bit of a plastic wrapper. Now I'm gonna just rip this open and take out the monitor right here. There we have it and we'll have to look at the details in just a moment. Then you get a power adapter, and I'm assuming that this is going to be in the form that you use for your country, wherever you are ordering from. Maybe you can choose it, I'm not sure about that. Then you of course have cables, and uh, about three of them. Here we have the first one, this is a mini HDMI to big sized, full size HDMI. Then you have a cable zip tie that you can use to kind of like buy them bind them together, I guess. Now we have a USB-C to USB-C cord that you can probably use to connect it to your computer. And last but not least, there's a third one, and this is a USB-A to USB-C, so you can use this monitor with older models of a computer. Now that's everything that's in the box, and with that, we can jump over to the setup. Now, in my case, I have a MacBook Pro right here. And with this, I can either use the USB-C to USB-C alone, so the computer will power the monitor as well as providing the information for the display. And you can also use the full-size HDMI on this particular MacBook model, where you can plug this in there and then the mini HDMI goes onto the monitor side. Now, I'm gonna just use the USB-C cord because that way I also don't need another plug so this can go off to the side as well. Now, as I've said before, this is a 14-inch computer monitor with a clamp that can be attached directly to your computer. When you unbox it, there's also this protective film right underneath the clamp so that the monitor panel itself is nice and protected. Now, though, let's set it up for the intended purpose, and that is, of course, mounting it as a side monitor to your MacBook. Now, how to do this, you basically have this clamp right here for the left side. This clamp right here can actually be removed, so you can actually take this off with a little bit of pressure on the sides. You can also put it on the other side, so this way now you would mount it on the right-hand side of your monitor. Now, I'm just gonna go for the default and have it like this, and then you have a bit of a clamp right there as well, so this is the bracket for the right-hand side of the monitor. Now, I'm just gonna open up the kickstand and extend it all the way, which is the best way that it fits on my computer. And then I can just basically place it right there, extend the clamp that goes around the computer monitor, slide it down, and now I can adjust the monitor just like so. However, it doesn't work without the cable. Now, it would be nice if it would work, and this, of course, is something that, for example, you can do with an iPad with a sidecar feature. Maybe at some point in the future, Apple will open this up and also make it possible for external monitor makers, but at this point, it's not available yet. So we are going to be stuck with having to use a cable like this. Now, again, I'm using the USB-C to USB-C cable, and I'm just gonna plug in the one end to my computer right there. And then I can use the other end to plug into one of the USB-C ports. And it doesn't really matter which one, because they both basically work the same way. You can also power the monitor with the second USB-C port, which is really cool because that way the computer won't drain the battery as quickly. However, if you have your computer plugged in, like I have right now, for example, then it doesn't really matter because the computer will draw the power from the grid and then it will just forward a part of it to the monitor. This monitor has a 14-inch panel. It is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is basically perfect for, for example, watching movies, because those are in exactly that aspect ratio. And it has a panel that is a 1920 by 1080, so it's a full HD display. This is, for me, one of the counterpoints, because this panel is a native full HD panel, and it does not provide any high DPI resolution. 
That means that, for example, text on this panel is not as sharp as it is on other panels, like for example, that you might be used from an iPhone, an Android device, or your MacBook screens, which have been retina displays or high DPI displays for a couple of years at this point. However, this is something to be expected at the price point that this is priced at. This is a really inexpensive monitor, which is spectacularly easy to mount. It only weighs 0.8 kilograms, which is fabulous if you are traveling, for example, as a digital nomad. And it has this nice feature to be able to clamp it directly to the back of your computer. It has a refresh rate of 60 hertz. It has 8 bit of color and it is a matte finish. Now the matte finish on this monitor is a bit of an interesting topic because I haven't been used to matte finished monitors in a very long time. The MacBook, for example, has a glass panel. iPads have glass panels, phones do the same. This here now is a matte finish, which is for one, not as protective for the monitor panel. And secondly, it reflects light in a very different way. The glossy one basically reflects it in a way that a mirror would. You can kind of see things moving around in the background, for example. On the matte one, those things are more blurry. But on the other hand, if there is a strong light source or you, the sunlight from a window, then the whole panel for me becomes undistinguishable or unreadable. Now, the last technical aspect to this monitor is that it goes up to a brightness of 400 nits. Now, this is not necessarily the most amazing brightness spec, but it is also not the worst. MacBooks nowadays go up to around 800 to 1000 or 1200. So you might not necessarily want to use this monitor in a very bright day. However, for in cafe use or office use or just normal living environments, this is going to be totally fine. This monitor has a mini HDMI port and two USB-C ports as well as a headphone jack. And it also has a menu which you can access with little buttons right here on the back. You can go into the menu, you can change the hardware setting for the brightness as well as some other stuff like for example the color hue. And this color changing and shifting is actually an interesting topic that I noticed with this monitor. Compared to my MacBook Pro monitor, the monitor showed text and white websites rather yellowish. Now, there is a setting in the menu for the monitor specifically, a hardware setting to make the monitor more yellow to kind of like get rid of the blue light. So for example, to reduce the blue light in the evening. However, this setting was not turned on. So I actually used the hue shift of the settings in the hardware menu to kind of like adjust for this change so that my colors across the monitors look a little bit more similar. Now, you also have to know that MacBook Pro monitors, as well as many modern laptop monitors, have a different color spectrum. For example, the MacBook Pro basically supports the full P3 HDR spectrum. However, in contrast to that, this monitor here is an sRGB monitor, which is far from the color spectrum that the P3 or HDR for that matter support. So this is not going to be your color accurate test monitor for photography or for video editing, for example. This is probably a monitor that is more geared toward people that are either playing games or are doing something like stock analysis as well as document writing. And for these tasks, I actually think that this is a great value in a monitor. You can use it, as I've mentioned before, as a monitor set up like this with the Crow, so the ability to clamp it directly to your computer. There, I think one of the biggest benefits here of this monitor is that it actually does not need any accessories attached to the back of your computer. So there's no magnets, there's no gluing, there's nothing of the sorts. You can simply just take this monitor as it is, move it to a different computer and clamp it there. No worries, no problems at all. This is made possible because you have the clamping mechanism, which has some nice padding on the sides so you're not scraping anything on your computer. This clamp mechanism, as far as I understand it, is supported from laptops around 13 inch all the way up to about 17 or 16.6 inches. And this also fits, for example, with the MacBook Air line and, for example, this MacBook Pro 16 inch model. The monitor thickness is from about four millimeters all the way to seven millimeters so that the clamps actually can attach to the sides of the monitor. The mechanism to hold the monitor up in the back is actually with this kickstand. And I believe that this is actually something that is very much necessary. 
I personally, for example, much rather have my computer standing up high on something like a next stand. This is a tool that has the monitor lifted up and then I can use a keyboard and trackpad so that I don't have to look down on the computer. Rather, I can just straight up look at the monitor itself without having to twist my neck forward. Now, with this setup, I actually have tried this and I would not recommend you do this because then, of course, the kickstand in the back does not attach to the bottom, so it doesn't work like that. It kind of does if you are putting it in an angle and all of these things. However, then all of the weight of the whole contraption rests on the hinges right here in your laptop, and I have no idea how those are going to hold up with the added about 0.8 kilograms. With that out of the way, however, you have other options to place your monitor. So if you want to use it like this, for example, in a coffee table, you don't need that much space because this can be floating in the air. So you don't need it to prop it up somewhere or put the monitor on the ground or something like this. It just flies with the computer. Then, of course, you also have the ability to set it up in a manner that is next to your computer. So let's move in the kickstand, flip it around. You can have the kickstand go into the other direction and you can still pull it out again. And then you can flap it all closed and then you can just simply place the monitor right there next to your computer. And now the monitor stands all by itself. And of course, I could also place my computer again on a stand and have my keyboard and trackpad to be able to use my main monitor more ergonomically and then have the second monitor, for example, to have different documents open, a website that I'm developing or stuff like this. This is a way you can use it in a normal horizontal mode. However, you can also place this whole thing in a vertical mode. For this, you can kind of like wrap into the um, kickstand. Then you can remove this little clamp right here and with that removed, you can then use the whole clamping mechanism as a stand itself. And you can basically have the monitor stand up for itself. Now, the hinge here isn't necessarily made for this, I guess. So if you put it too much on an angle, it might actually just start like closing by itself slowly. However, if you put it up in a kind of like more or less vertical way and like this, then you can have a nice vertical monitor for, for example, having a document open and you have a full on PDF page there, or you have, for example, the streaming text of chat when you're live streaming and all of these things right there on the monitor. Of course, in the system settings, you can make it so that the monitor actually is rotated so that it is using this monitor in a native way with the vertical format. I really love monitors like this and the fact that it is super lightweight and very versatile in the way that you can use it with your computer, either as a standalone monitor or clamped to your computer is really, really nice. There are a couple of things that I've mentioned throughout the video that I personally don't necessarily love about the monitor. However, in the cost versus benefit analysis, I think it is an incredible deal. Right now with the Kickstarter campaign for about $115, this is just a steal. And even with the regular price of, I think it is going to be $179, this is still a very good travel monitor. 0.8 kilograms for the whole thing is basically as low as you can get with the type of setup that you're using here. And this is partially also due to the fact that this is made mostly out of plastic, which you can see however you want. Now, the resolution on this monitor is what I mentioned before, one of the things that you just get with the price point. However, for me personally, as I am so used to the Retina displays, it really is a bit of an eye strain to look at just a HD monitor. However, if you are someone that, for example, use a lot of spreadsheets and you just want to have more space, you are doing a lot of research and you want to have a PDF document open at the same time, or you're a stock trader and you want to have more screen real estate, to simply have more charts open, then I think this monitor is really powerful. And other use cases, like for example, using your game console on a bit of a bigger screen with an HDMI cable, those are of course also options for you. And now if you wanna have a look at this product and the Kickstarter campaign, as long as it's still running or the shop, of course, I will have links down in the description below.